African President Cyril Ramaphosa on Wednesday swore in a government of national unity comprising 11 political parties. However, unlike the national government, the parties agreed to allow the provinces to choose their own government of provincial unity. But the Democratic Alliance, the DA, which came second in the May 29th election, wants provincial governments to be chosen proportionally based on each party's performance in the election. The ANC disagreed and accuses the DA of misrepresenting the statement of intent. Professor Sipo Sipe is a political analyst and a former deputy vice chancellor for institutional support at the University of Zululand. He tells me the dispute illustrates that elections have consequences. When we have elections, normally people expect um, that the party will get an outright majority, which would be 50 percent plus one. Now, for the first time after 30 years, the ANC government at uh, national level and provincial level has uh, performed badly, but still remaining the major party that got more votes. So in Gauteng, the ANC got uh, 34 percent. At the national level, it got uh, 40 percent. And what the ANC then decided to do, because it still got more votes than all other parties, was to say what the voters have said to the parties is that you have to work together. The ANC decided to say, given the fact that there's so much divisions in this country, it will make sense for us to try to have governments of national unity at both the provincial level as well as at national level. At the national level, they were able to strike a deal. But at the provincial level, the DA sought to argue that uh, the difference between its performance and that of the ANC is simply mere 6%. And the ANC must stop behaving as if when it invites the DA to form this uh, provincial government of unity, it is inviting the DA as a junior partner. And this is where things went wrong. But I think also... The attitude of uh, the leader of the DA uh, sounded so haughty and so somehow recklessly and tactless to an extent that people saw it as a, a white person who sees himself as having to act as a supervisor of uh, black people. And the premier of Gauteng uh, then decided to talk to all other parties to say, let's have a broad representation. And the other parties came. And as a result, they are able to have more than 50 plus one uh, without the DA. So that is where the challenge is that uh, now you have uh, at the provincial level and the hub of our economy, an ANC-led government of uh, provincial unity that is without the white party called the DA. What does that mean now in terms of the functioning of the national government? Well, at the national government, well, one must take it as, um, let's see it as an experiment. But uh, what we also know is that uh, the ANC's poor performance was because it had failed to change the material conditions of its traditional constituents. Now that uh, it has less support, the question arises that if you failed to deliver when you had 100%, and you were acting alone, what are the chances that you are going to succeed to satisfy your traditional constituency, especially when you have people or members of your cabinet whose agenda is very different? Turkey has begun mediating talks between Somalia and Ethiopia over a port deal. Addis Ababa signed with the breakaway region of Somaliland earlier this year, according to four officials familiar with the matter. The negotiations are the latest attempt to mend diplomatic ties between the East African neighbors whose relationship soared in January when Ethiopia agreed to lease 20 kilometers of coastline from Somaliland in exchange for recognition of its independence. Mogadishu called the agreement illegal and retaliated by expelling the Ethiopian ambassador and threatening to kick out thousands of Ethiopian troops stationed in the country helping battle Islamist insurgency. 
Spokespeople for the Somali government, Turkey's foreign ministry, and Ethiopia's foreign ministry, government and intelligence service did not immediately respond to requests for comment. A spokesperson for Somaliland, which has struggled to gain international recognition despite governing itself and enjoying comparative peace and stability since declaring independence in 1991, said it was not involved in the talks. The goal of the negotiation was unclear and expectations of a resolution were low, two of the officials said. Despite rumors that Somalia has softened its stance on refusing to engage in dialogue until Ethiopia withdraws the agreement, it seems unlikely, one of the officials said. Turkey has become a close ally of the Somali government since President Recep Tayyip Erdogan first visited Mogadishu in 2011, training its security forces and supplying development assistance. The two nations signed a defense pact in February under which Ankara will provide maritime security support to Somalia to help the African country defend its territorial waters. Turkey has built schools, hospitals, and infrastructure and provided scholarships for Somalis to study in Turkey and in return secured a foothold in Africa and on a key global shipping route.